today I'm going to talk about nail houses. There are many nail houses in China, and I've I heard about them before I came to China, and um, you still hear about them now. The interesting thing is, nail houses are you not you're not unique to China. There are nail houses in America. There are nail houses in Japan. There are nail houses in the UK. So it's not just a people in China who refuse to sell their houses. It happens all over the world. Now, the reason I uh, thought this would make a good topic is because two reasons.、Um, right behind my apartment at the moment, there is a new development happening, and in that development. There is one house, one nail house.、Um, they are refusing to sell.、Um, they just still live there. Everything else has been demolished. So that's what made me think about it.、Um, and also the fact that all the apartments were in, in my community, they are people who actually lived in the small village behind my home. So they are. The people whose grandparents lived there, and then they, their parents come from that village, and then a lot of the older people, we'll like my wife as well, well she was actually born in that village. So over time, the government in Beijing and the whole of China, they do redevelopment, and this happens not just in China, all over the world. Cities get bigger, and especially cities like Beijing, which have like twenty. Four million something people. The city is getting bigger all the time. So people who used to live in farming communities and small villages,、um, they slowly、uh, the city encroaches upon these places, and the government wants to、um, urban development. They want to change it. They want to build apartments. They want to get rid of all these small villages. So how does it work? Well, for starters, let's talk about how they get the land in the first place. Now, in China, you cannot own land. You can own the right to use the land, but you cannot own the land. Whether you're a foreigner or whether you're Chinese, you cannot own the land. So, years ago, there would be a family in a a, a community somewhere, and then the son or would be getting married. So he would go to the local government or the local council, and then he would ask for a piece of land. So. He would tell them that he's getting married, and then he was obviously going to start a family. So then the council would allocate him a piece of land. So he would get given like not a title deed. He would get be given the、um, the usage of the land. So then he would mark out his land. He'd build his little、uh, house there with a courtyard, and you know. Plant some vegetables, and he'd ha- happily live there. Now, normally in China, you get usage of the land for seventy years. That's what China's been doing for a long time now. So then, after seventy years, in theory, the government will renew your lease.、Um, no one's really sure because it it hasn't been seventy years for anyone yet. But that's basically the theory of how it works. So you get your property, you build your house, and you're thinking you're going to live there happily ever after. But then, as the city gets bigger, or they decide to put in a big freeway, or whatever the development is, sometimes the government will come to people, and then they'll say to people, "We want to take that land back. So、um, we want to build something. So we're going to give you compensation for your、um, your troubles for the fact that you're losing the land." And normally, then the government will also give them some land somewhere else, or like in、um, big cities like Beijing, they will give them accommodation, like an apartment somewhere else. So, ah, right. So here, this is how it works, basically. So with my wife's family,、um, there was her mum and her dad and her living there. So、um, the government offered them.、Um, Another apartment because they the government had built、um, new apartments nearby, so they offered them another apartment, and then they offered them some compensation in cash as well. Now, this is how nail houses start. This is the interesting part. Now, although a lot of the people in the village didn't think the compensation was that fair because they were moving to apartments and they were losing their land. Um, or the usage of the land, where they had bigger houses and they had veggie gardens and everything, 
Now, the people in the Communist Party, Communist Party members, they are kind of like obliged to do the right thing and accept it because they believe that if they accept it, then other people would see that they're accepting it, so then everyone will follow suit. But of course, that doesn't happen. So with my wife's family, they accepted the uh, compensation um, and the uh, another apartment, and then they moved out. And at the time, this was in 2004, um, at the time, about a third of the village did that. They accepted the new apartments because they thought that would be a better lifestyle in a, in a new building and they got some cash as well. Not a great deal. Now, so the two thirds of the village decide they're not happy with the compensation. They don't think it's fair. They would rather stay there. So they just say no. And the thing is in China and with most countries, that's, it's, you've got the right for usage of that land and the government can't just take that away. So there's nothing really the government can do. So then those people decide to stay. So one year goes, one year goes past, two years, three years. So the developer can't do anything with the land. Now China's a very patient country. So normally China offers to uh, people's compensation because they have a development they have planned for long-term future. It's not normally we want to knock it down in a week or a month's time. Normally it's like a five or ten year plan. So um, two thirds of the people stayed in the village and then they said we weren't happy with the compensation, we don't want to move so we want more. So then the government looks at it and they still want to do the development. So then the government comes back and they give these people a better offer. So they've stayed in the village for, I don't know, maybe you know five or six years it's taken, but finally the government comes back and has offered them um, uh, better a better compensation so the compensation normally is per person they will offer you like a 50 square meters per person so if there's a mum like a, a, a mum and dad there they'll offer them a hundred square meter apartment um, if there's a mum and dad and a grandmother then they'll offer them like 150 square meters now most apartments aren't that big so in that case they will offer them like 100 a meter uh, apartment and then one 50 square a meter apartment so they end up getting like two apartments and then they will, might get some cash compensation as well so in the village nearby um, my place they offered more compensation so they offered people like two apartments or maybe even three apartments depending on the size of the family and then they offered them um, a, a larger amount of cash so then more people accepted this but of course then the first people who moved out in the first third then they complained to the government and said this isn't fair we did the right thing and we moved out when we were asked and we accepted the compensation but now you're offering people a more so there was a government investigation about it and then they was they found out there was a lot of corruption in the in the first part of the development and they the, actually the, the mayor of this area got um, detained um, and went to jail for corruption. So then the people who uh, moved out in the first place, then they were actually offered some more compensation. So like with my um, wife's family, they, they were actually offered another a unit in, the, in another, development, another development. So that was their like extra compensation. So now two thirds of the people have moved out of the village but still there's one third still staying there. So as time goes along, we've got 2010, 2011, 2012, and people just aren't moving. So then the government offers them more. That's the government wants them to move. So their only option is to offer them more. So then by 2013, you know, more people move than 2014, 2015 more people are starting to move as they're offered more compensation. And then finally, by about 2015, um, almost all the people had moved. There was like three or four families still there. And then um, they've negotiated. And this is like, so we've started in 2004, the initial, um, the initial development, and it's now 2017. So it's, it's a long time. We're, it's what, 13 years. Um, 
but finally they've got everyone out of the village so everyone's accepted compensation and slowly people have got more and more and more but now there is still just one guy there and he refuses to move and he he's not willing to take any of the compensation they offer him um, more apartments and all the rest of it he says no no I don't that's not enough I just want more so he refuses to move and now all the rest of the village has been demolished it's just rubble except for one house um, and he still has his little garden there and he just says no I'm not moving and that's a nail house it's just refusing to go so the developer uh, this is after 13 years so the developer they've got a choice of they can either build around him or uh, change the development or wait for longer but until they can come to some type of amicable amicable agreement the person um, doesn't have to move because he has rights of usage of that land and the government can't take that away so, yeah, sometimes it goes on for years and years and years. Um, sometimes the government just keeps offering more and more. Sometimes the government just gives up and builds around him because they think, no, we're going to cap what we offer him at a certain amount and we're not going to just pay extreme amounts of money to get him to move. So it's, um, it can be a, a very long, long process. Um, this is another village uh, nearby my house and they've, China's learnt a lot. Now they're offering more compensation um, and they're offering um, better units maybe or um, they're trying to make it a lot more easier for people to move. So this um, here, they put all the banners up around this village here. This is another old village and they put all the banners up everywhere and the banners read stuff like um, make a better environment, um, improve the country's development, uh, make people's lives better, move out happily, um, sign, um, sign your agreement quickly and choose your new house and be satisfied. All, all different you know, propaganda type slogans like this. Um, sign early and, set and get your benefits early. Uh, what else? Uh, yeah. I'm a pioneer to contribute to the new Wenchern area. So all these different slogans are put up on these banners. And in this village, they've offered the people um, a very fair compensation and they are building new apartments and they're offering to pay the people's rent. So these people will be moved out and the government will pay their rent for, I think, like for two or three years or something as the new buildings are being built and then they get their new buildings. So they get you know, cash compensation and a, and a new apartment or, or two new apartments. So these, this village here, people are closing down very quickly and they're actually already starting to demolish some of the houses because people have signed you know, within weeks of um, getting the notification that the village will be knocked down. So this is running very smooth, but some of the other people yeah, if if they're not if they're not happy with the compensation, um, it can delay it for a very long time. And yeah, I, I don't know. Some people, it just comes down to being greedy. I can understand that some people say, no, I don't want to move because you know my grandfather lived here, I buried my dog here, or blah 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 blah. And they, I don't care about the money. I don't care about the apartments. That I can understand. But ninety. I'd say 99%, but yeah, literally like 95% of the people who don't want to move want more. That's what it comes down to. They're, they're not happy with the compensation and they get greedy. They're like, oh, okay, the, the other people, you offered them two apartments and then you offered them a million. Well, I want three million or five million or whatever. So they ask for a lot of money. Um, and that's why they just keep refusing to ask for more and more and more. Because, you know, 20 years ago, well, back in 2004, yeah, sometimes the compensation wasn't that fair. They were just kind of asked to move out. Here's your apartment. Um, here, you might get some cash and you need to move. But nowadays, it's starting to, well, it has been for quite a few years now, they've really started to change things. And the people are getting... A fair compensation and they are getting another apartment so 
it's it's not as bad as it used to be. Um, I've spoken to some other people in this area, and with him, um, he was given four apartments because he had him and his wife, and he had his in-laws, and then he had two sons. So they actually gave him four apartments, and they gave him something like four million uh, yuan as well, or RMB as well. So that's a really good compensation for the land he had because really speaking, the guy could never work again. He could just retire off the money he had and the four apartments. He could rent two of them out, you know, use two of them for living and um, be very, very, you know, wealthy, really speaking. But so most of the time now the compensation is fair and the people who refuse are just greedy and want a lot more than um, what is fair, what is fair market value. But that's that's just my opinion of, of how I see it anyway. So that's nail houses and that's how it works. So yeah, the government just doesn't come in with machine guns and shoot you. You don't just instantly get locked up and um, or taken to prison. Well, unless they're 100% sure they know they won't get caught. Maybe. No, but in general, you know, the, there's nothing the government will do. You need to agree with it because you've... Uh, you've got the ownership of the land so this is in the village where they've already started knocking some of the houses down you can see the banners down as well but this is on the corner so these people have accepted the um, compensation and yep they've already moved out they're gone and um, the houses are getting knocked down already so It's China changes so quickly. Um, just in the few years I've been living here in uh, Beijing and Wenchun, um, so many things have changed. Um, new buildings come up, new roads. Uh, opposite my house, where this was a nice quiet area when I moved here, but now opposite my house they've built this massive community centre and it's got a a movie theatre in there and a library and um, all different training rooms, uh, um, a supermarket underneath, a McDonald's and it's become a very, very busy area now. The traffic has gone crazy, um, the cars all park over the road and block the road, the cars all park on the footpath and block the footpaths and you, we're battling to get out of our community because of all the cars blocking everywhere. And this has just changed in the last, that, you know, from three years. It just, bang, community centre goes up, um, and shopping centre goes up, and it's just become a very, very busy town now, um, where before it was so nice and peaceful. And that happens all over China. It's just getting so busy and so much bigger. There's always new development. There's always new buildings going up. Um, and the people, you know, they are flooding to these areas as well. The, once they build the apartments there, that brings in another three or 4,000 people who were spread out over a bigger area before, now all come into one community. But um, the pro one of the problems with that too is these people have suddenly um, got money um, and with that, they go and buy cars and that. So um, where before a lot of these people couldn't afford cars, they lived in a small village somewhere and they had a, a very small income. Now they've moved to an apartment where there's, you know, whatever story building and um, they get a lot of cash from the government, so they spend it. And then there's suddenly, you know, 2,000 or, you know, or 1,000 cars which need to be parked in these communities. Um, and you can, when they get given the, um, when they get given the apartment, most of the time they can only buy a parking spot. So there's parking areas, like at a lot of these communities, they have underground parking, but you get given the apartment, but not the parking. So if you want the parking, you need to buy that. So most people say, oh no, that's too expensive. I don't want to buy a parking spot because I just park my car there. So I'll just park anywhere. And then of course, in the community area, they park on the roads. So like in my community here, everybody parks their cars on the sides of the roads. So it brings it down to a single lane and it becomes really difficult to drive in and out because of all these cars parked everywhere. It's, you know, it's good that 
these people get money, but it just brings a lot of problems with it, which you know, we didn't have before. Right, driving out of the community here.